What's up guys? In this video, we're going to take a look at what's going on in the crypto space. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Solana quote unquote hack. Um, on the official, you know, crypto fake news media sites, I'm not seeing the reason, but the rumors I saw were that there was some bug in some library that a lot of the Solana apps and wallets are using that would let you easily recreate same private key. Basically the knots or whatever they were using to generate the private key was uh, predetermined. Um, I'm talking about this at a high level. So if you get, if I'm messing up this technical description, you know, whatever, so people can correct me in the comments, but that's my understanding because they were able to just basically recreate keys and then just sign transactions and send money all over the place. So um, it's not really a network issue, I guess. It's more of a dev incompetence thing with building third party stuff to interact with the with the Solana chain or whatever. But, you know, it's just again, I mean, the, the theme is the same. 99.9% .9 is criminals activity, people trying to steal this stuff and sell it for fiat, right? Or, you know, use it for to do whatever value, send it to mixers or whatever, which we're going to get into. So um, that's that. Um, speaking of criminals and uh, <laughs> frauds, uh, Michael Saylor stepped down as CEO after MicroStrategy, aka Bitcoin Hedge Fund, lost what 917 million in Q1 or Q2, something like that. And um, if you look at the numbers that they reported, if they hadn't lost, they lost that. All that was from Bitcoin, by the way, from hodling, from hodling BTC. Um, if they hadn't done that, they probably would have made money or broke even at least for the quarter. Um, so, you know, he, he still stepped, he stepped down, but he's still on the board because he's been there forever, I guess. And they felt sorry for him probably. But, um, you know, and he's still pumping and dumping and shilling, right? So, but this stuff's got to get cleaned up, right? He needs to be completely kicked out. They need to capitulate. This is just, the, that's just, again, I think we're just at the warning phase here of all this stuff happening. This is all just teetering, you know, everyone's kind of waiting and seeing what's going to happen next. Um, so, you know, for him, uh, what really needs to happen is that they need to get liquidated. But, you know, him, him, uh, you know, stepping down or whatever is just the first step, really. It's the first step of, OK, you guys have a problem, a leadership issue here. OK, um, the other thing that I think is partially responsible for this little short term rally we're seeing in the crypto markets is the uh, up alleged upcoming ETH2 merge. Um, I think this is one of those by the rumor sell the news type thing but eth has been pumping hard um it, you know it got during the dip it got down to like 880 something like that and now we're at, it's at 1700 it's dipped a little bit for i'm again i'm gonna get into that mixing thing um but yeah it's like 1700 as of recording and you know it looks like people are anticipating that this merge is going to solve all the problems with the sharding and this proof of stake and blah 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 and i'll admit i'm not familiar with the details but I really don't, frankly, I don't care because it's fundamentally broken. The sharding shit, they've been talking about it for years. It's not going to work. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, that, you know, they, I feel like they just need to pr push forward. But I just don't see them solving their problems because, again, it's a fundamental computer science thing. This global state, syncing it across different ones. I mean, this is partially the reason Solana goes down all the time because it's just, it's a fool's errand. It's just not going to work. Um, and I'm going to do another video about how this, you know, talking a little bit about the differences between the coin model versus the account-based model and why things were designed this way in, in terms of scalability. So we'll see what happens. For me, I look at It'll probably, it might keep going up. I don't know when the merge date is. Uh, allegedly, it's September. I haven't looked that up because they'll probably push it, delay it, you know. Um, but folks can let me know in the comment. Let us know in the comments. Um, but I would expect what to happen is for it to keep going up. And then, um, you know, once it is successful or fails or gets kicked down the can, then it'll start dumping again. Um, the next thing, uh, now let's get into that coin mixing stuff because this is kind of the, what I mainly I want to talk about in this video. So this morning, it's Tuesday, what's the day? The 9th of August, early morning EST here. The, um, the SEC or U.S. government, no, it was the Treasury Department. <laughs> Actually, the Treasury Department, not good. Um, basically said all U.S. Free people need to stop using this tornado cash mixer, which is allegedly is some mixer on ETH. Um, I don't know too much about it. I've heard the name before. 
But, you know, because it's account based system, they use this mixing thing to like, you know, put coins in and get coins out. That's my understanding of it. And they basically say all U.S. folks need to stop it. Uh, uh, the devs are, uh, you know, chicken shit, took down the GitHub, um, something like that. I couldn't I couldn't access it. Link in, I'll link to the article um, in the description. But um, they apparently one of them tried to say, oh, it's a decentralized service. Dude, that shit's not going to work, man. Like, it doesn't matter. Somebody owns these coins when you put them in the mixer, right? Like, it's not a robot that doesn't exist, that doesn't have a name or social security number, that's depositing money into this smart contract, this decentralized smart contract. Reality is going to hit these people hard, man. It's just, it's just because you're doing stuff on a chain that's public and you're hiding who you are, doesn't mean it didn't actually happen, right? Like this, this stuff is not going to fly. And these folks are going to get hit really hard with reality, man. It's just, you know, and it's going to come to BTC too with their tap root and all this other stuff. And, you know, BCH, I know they use mixers too. And, and, you know, I mean, honestly, same things on BSV with some of these swapping pools. The same shit's going to happen, man. If it gets big enough, they're going to go after it. You can't be doing these anonymous things. It's just, you know, morally, it's a different conversation, right? If, if, if we didn't have these laws and regulations and stuff, if this stuff wasn't captured already, you know, I would have a different stance on this. But the reality is there's no way they're going to allow this stuff to happen, especially since here in the U.S. they passed some Inflation Reduction Act, which is going to do the exact opposite. But little snuck in there like they always do is uh, $80 billion funding for the IRS. And they say, oh, we're not going after the middle class. We're going to go after the rich. Oh, OK, sure. Um, that's what that's for. So. The timing here is just, it's not a coincidence. Um, it's just not. So, and with this news about the coin mixing, last week or the week before, they uh, the SEC is also, or the government is also going after Kraken for allegedly allowing trades with Iran. Uh, you know, money laundering, all AML, all this, all the same stuff they go after people for. You know, the, um, what is it? It's It's that whole theme where, you know, just some folks are doing the, the whole AML thing is silly, but the reality is these guys are businesses, they're corporate entities, they're set up, they make a lot of money. They're going to be targets for this stuff, especially when things go wrong. So um, with Kraken, they're going after them for the same thing, same type of thing. So it, it looks like finally the government has woken up to this stuff and it's not a coincidence that it's right after a crash and, you know, Celsius going bankrupt. These uh, these rich guys that were talking shit on Twitter all on the run, shutting down their accounts, you know, not saying anything anymore because these coins stopped pumping. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not a surprise that they've woken up. They're attacking when it's weak, when it's when it's teetering, as I keep saying. So, you know, I expect to see more government action here going forward, especially now that the IRS has gotten tons of funding. So, yeah, I mean, it's just going to get worse. Um, so, you know. I just, I don't, the future, the future for crypto, crypto is not bright at all. Um, and speaking of which, I've been talking about this, the tether printer suddenly woke up as well. So they printed a billion dollars last week. I don't know how many people noticed that. Um, coincidentally, the BTC price rallied. It's just like, it's amazing, right? Th those two things couldn't possibly be related. No, no way, right? Um, it's just, it's Im incredible, seriously. Um, so... You know, it'll be interesting to see if they keep printing or not. And, you know, that came at the midst of all these exchanges being under investigation. Coinbase for insider trading and securities. Binance, same thing. Kraken. So, you know, this stuff, man, it's just, I, you know, maybe Tether will do it to, to, to get this exit rally here so they can, you know, get, out, get as much money out as they can. And I feel like that's the game here. The game is, I think the jig is up and I think the, the, the leaders at the top realize it. They're just trying to get as much out as possible. They're trying to delay, 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 delay as much as possible before, you know, the, the true crash or the, you know, the sweep up or whatever happens. Um, so that's that. And then now let's talk about Coinbase. So the latest thing, you know, I, I did the video, man, and then that insider trading thing hit and then they get under investigation by the SEC. So it's just more stuff keeps happening. Their stock dropped down to 50 again and then it rallied. It rallied big time off off the news that they partnered with uh, heavenly firm BlackRock 
to do Bitcoin something custody or something. And it's just amazing, man. Like if these guys, they took the loan from Goldman Sachs in May and now they're partnering with BlackRock, one of the most morally gray institution, morally black institutions on earth, man. It's just unbelievable. And their stock shot up to 90 bucks. And it's just incredible, man. Like, I'm just in awe at watching this. And, you know, the, the reaction from the crypto space was mixed. I think, you know, a lot of the folks that are still idealistic saw it and they're like, Ugh, and then other folks are like, oh, this is produ this is progress. And it's just, you know, it's just it's unbelievable, man. Seriously. I mean, next I don't, I don't even know next. I mean, next, the government's just going to seize them or Goldman Sachs is going to buy Coinbase or something like that. I think we, someone else also mentioned that too. And, you know, people are going to be like, oh, this is adoption. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so the theme here is I just look, what I look at moving forward here is I look at the crypto prices still kind of, you know, stagnating, right? The ETH2 thing is kind of a decoupled, um, is an asymmetric m price movement. But again, I think that's by the rumor, sell the news. Because again, no one really cares about this shit, man. I mean, people just see it as an opportunity to pump the price. It's just like with Wall Street, when these jobs numbers and stuff come out, you know, they just look for an excuse to pump. But, you know, then the net, over time, it just it recorrects back to its equal equilibrium or whatever. And Because like, does people really care if the jobs numbers that come out are you know 10k above expected and then wall street pumps three percent on one day the dow the s p nasdaq do people really care about that like it, 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 oh if the jobs number was uh 10 only 10 under the 250,000 number then oh we dump right it's just it's just an excuse for liquidity and volatility that's all it really is and i think this east too is kind of the same thing because you know i think even the founder over there he knows this stuff's not going to work that's why they've been kicking the can down for so long so it's just again it's just another like liquidity move to suck more more dummies in to buy it and then get dumped and then you know short-term rally here i mean it's great for the people that have been holding right i mean Going, going up, doubling basically in a month is awesome, you know, for if you're holding the coin. So, I mean, that's just proof of it right there. And, you know, maybe it'll keep pumping. Who knows? So, yeah, that's what I want to talk about. I think that's it here. Um, oh, yeah. Let's talk about, uh, I guess we could talk about BSV. So, a couple of things, uh, mainly to do with haste. So, they're, to again, um, I'm not, I'm just giving my opinion here. Their token HST, which is like a rewards token, utility token type thing. It hit 20,000 sats, uh, the price of it. Um, I think that's basically the high if you ignore the noise from the beginning where there was lots of fuckery going on. But um, it, it just, it's just slowly rising, man. And, you know, I'm just giving my opinion. You guys do your research, whatever. Go read the white paper. Check out the company, whatever. Of course, referral links in the description. So if you think I'm shilling, it's because I am. Um, but you know, with that, you guys do your research on it, but I, it's, again, that's interesting, right? Um, that, that honest businesses that are trying to just make money are actually doing well. And, you know, it's the ones that are doing all this, this short term JPEG and swaps and, um, you know, DeFi pools. Those are the ones that are struggling and all these risky funds and staking and all this stuff. You know, they're the ones laying off staff. They're the ones going bankrupt. But haste, you know, even on this this abhorrent chain that is BSV, that's allegedly dead, um, they're they're getting more users and their their token is going up. And speaking of the users, they just posted a tweet where they had tons of signups uh, this month already. So um, I think that's good news for the whole space. Uh, I really do. So you guys can check that out. Um, I think that's all we got here. Um, and then, oh, they, they also have another sister company by the same people called Take It NFT. Maybe you guys have seen that. Um, they're going to be releasing a lot of updates to that with a free market that's with using the same script as the Relay stuff. So all that will be kind of interoperable. So I'm looking forward to that because that, that app is pretty slick. And, you know, I've used it a couple of times. So um, that's, uh, that's something to look at for later this month. So um, other than that, I think it's pretty quiet, man. I mean, you know, a lot of liquidity is drying up just overall, you know, not just BSV, not just crypto, everything. Um, and, you know, Fed raised rates again. It looks like they're going to keep going because of this little, uh, I alluded to this whole jobs craziness. 
Dude, just drive down the street. Everybody's hiring. I don't know where they're pulling these numbers from. They're just making shit up to like appeat to try to double speak away that we're in a recession. Um, but it looks like that's going to embolden the Fed to just keep going, keep rising, which, you know, if the rates were actually rising, it would be a good thing. I don't know how many people are noticing this. The mortgage rates earlier, was it yesterday or the week before, last week, actually hit a four month low. They dropped below 5%, which I thought the rates were supposed to be going up. Uh, the treasury yields are down. Um, and the, uh, the savings rates are not going up like they did in 2018. If you're in the U S you guys can talk about this. Um, I'm seeing, I have different savings accounts and these banks are not raising. They are not matching what the fed's doing before the announcement will come out. And I would get an email the same day or the next day from whoever Wealthfront, American express saying your rate is the fed funds rate. Now what I'm seeing is, um, Wealthfront is like, 0.25 behind. Amex is like almost a full percent behind. Goldman Sachs is like half a percent behind. So because the Fed isn't actually entering the market and doing to doing that, they keep they keep kicking the can, right? Because I don't think they're going to be able to do it, but um, to actually sell those bonds. But they they claim they're going to do it in September. We'll see. Um, you know, finally, uh, you know, what do they call it? Un un something their balance sheet unroll un you know whatever um so that's gonna i think that'll be interesting to watch there's just a lot of talk 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 but um but yeah so i think overall here the theme is look the government is finally woken up with this crypto stuff i don't know if it's a good thing it, it was inevitable though especially with all the scamming going on and it's not a surprise that they waited until there was a huge crash and lots of criminal stuff being brought to the forefront to act so that's where we're at. Let me know a feedback. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.